I've just had a rummage in the storeroom and have come across three, yes, three pairs of authentic boots that I made many years ago. Uh, this is the first pair and uh, when they were new, they're rather stiff with age and neglect now, but when they were new they were beautifully comfortable. I, I drew round my feet and made them uh, exactly to fit my feet and they had uh, smooth, uh, rather well stitched, though I say so myself, uh, leather soles and um, you could see the sort of brogue type thing and uh, I was very happy with them and uh, they were extremely comfortable. Unfortunately I then uh, joined a reenactment society and we'd be running around the woods fighting each other and so forth and I pretty quickly discovered the drawback of wearing authentic boots. Some people cheated, they wore inauthentic boots and uh, they, was, they were at a significant advantage in combat because smooth soled leather boots, flat soled leather boots like these, give you pretty much no grip on muddy ground at all. And the enemy only had to be deployed up a really quite quite a moderate slope. And if it was muddy, which think, well, don't fancy it, I can't, I, I can't fight uphill up that slope. It, I'll be at such a huge disadvantage, having such a poor grip. Let's just march around somewhere else and force them to redeploy. Uh, I remember in one fight, for instance, um, I wasn't in command. The commander said, right, you, you and you are in the middle at the front and you, you and you uh, to the left, you deep scout and Lloyd, you're a right flanker. Oh, thank you very much. So uh, there I was on the right flank and to my right was a very steep, quite small hill. And to my surprise, appearing at the top of it was a man in quite a lot of armour who said, and yes, he actually did say this, I am your nemesis. Anyway, uh, he came charging down at me in, as I say, quite a lot of armour and I thought, well, I'll just... Uh, Take a few steps over here and watch him go Wah! splat. Yep, that's pretty much what I thought. And then, of course, I had him. Of course, he was going to get it up almost immediately, so I had to had to rush in there and get him before he got to his feet. So I charged in and, and I fell over as well. And then, of course, it was just a race for whoever got up first won. And he fell over first, so he won the race because he had a head start. So learn from this. If there, you're in a fight and it's inevitable that both of you will fall over, fall over first. Um, uh, so uh, I did notice that people with hobnails on their authentic boots did far better. Now I've got uh, this pair of five-a-side football boots and they have these studs all over the bottom of them. You see the, roughly the, how many of them there are and roughly the size of them and yep that's pretty much what you do to uh, a pair of authentic boots. Unfortunately you can see I didn't do it particularly well. Um, and uh, the result was I then had far less pretty and far less comfortable uh, boots. But they gripped the ground! You could run about on, on earth and, and mud and not slip quite as badly as you otherwise would. Um, and the reason they were so uncomfortable is that the hobnails, uh, because they were, it was a completed shoe, went right the way through the sole. And uh, so on the inside, possibly you can see on the, on the inside, the, the, uh, the ends of the hobnails, um, and so even though they're all turned round, it's still not a, not a, a comfortable wear, these. Uh, so I made another pair, and uh, reenactors among you will probably recognise this particular pair of boots from a Danish uh, bog find. And uh, this pattern is authentic and really comfortable as well. And this time, uh, I didn't skimp on the leather, it's good quality stuff, veg tan. And uh, they've got a single piece of thick leather for the whole of the sole, which I then hobnailed. And then I attached the sole with its hobnails to the upper so the upper doesn't have the, the tops of the hobnails coming through it. And so these are very comfortable and very grippy. Huzzah! Though obviously not very good with puddles. Um, so now I had grip. That is to say I had grip as long as I was running around in the countryside on earth. Because uh, if you're on a hard surface, hobnails are really not very good at all. Um, and soldiers right up until World War II were wearing hobnails and finding this out for themselves. If you run on a, a flat, hard surface, the hobnails that don't dig into the surface because the surface is too uh, hard, they skid all over the shop. Uh, and we have in the, in the literature from Josephus's The Jewish War, for instance, there's the mighty Julian. Yes, a centurion who scattered all before him. He got into the city of Jerusalem and any man who came close to him, he hacked down and he put great crowds of them to flight and he charged after them and he got to the pavement in front of the temple of Jerusalem and he ran onto the pavement and yeah, splat, fell right on his backside and those that he was chasing just went to him. Let's get him! And they mobbed him and that was the end of poor Julian. Um, 
And uh, I can confirm that on hard surfaces, hobnails are not terribly good. I have my own Julian moment. Uh, there was a bridge over there that was being held by their best fighter who was really good and no one could get past him. And quite a lot of our guys were trying to get past this one guy and failing. Uh, but I, oh, I did so well. I did so well. I fought round the other side on my own, killing man after man and, and, and sending all those guys back there. And I then had enough room. I looked over my left shoulder. I then had enough room to dash for the bridge. I thought, right, I'll scare these guys off so they go back up. <laughs> and then I'll run this way and I'll be too quick for them. I'll be too quick for them. I'll be, I'll take that guy out on the bridge from behind. Victory shall be ours. So I ran up to him. And I, oh, he was so dead. He was so mine. He was so dead. And I jumped down onto the bridge. Now the bridge was uh, made out of wood. It was thick, thick planking, very flush and smooth. And just for extra, <laughs> extra good measure, it was covered in a thin layer of wet leaves. Anyway, I jumped down onto the bridge and immediately it went, yeah, crash. He, hearing a crash behind him, turned and with his spear went, stabbed, and then carried on holding the bridge. And um, so there you go. Authentic boots. Um, smooth soled leather is very, very comfortable and loads of people wore it in the ancient world. Um, but it gives you really almost no grip on on earth and mud and so forth. And whereas if you're just being a farmer, that might not matter too much. Uh, if you're trying to fight in armor up a slope, it matters an awful lot. And uh, Caligai, uh, that's just the Roman for a hobnailed sandal. Caligai give you excellent grip, very much like a modern fiver side boot uh, on earth and so forth. But unfortunately, almost no grip at all on smooth, ha smooth hard surfaces. So for those of you uh, running uh, Dungeons and Dragons adventures or so forth, and you have people running from surface to surface at high speed, that's something you might want to take into account. Bindy Bears!